So here's a little piece entitled Workers at Ocean Grove. Here's an excerpt. excerpt. Ocean Grove is, beyond all doubt, for the family, of the family, and by the family. There are hundreds of babies here. The plump and pretty infants swing in hammocks under the trees and upon cottage stoops, shout with glee as they roll and tumble upon the sands of the beach, or gaze with supreme disdain upon those who have to walk while they ride in royal state in gay carriages propelled by demure nurse girls wearing coquettish little white caps. Throngs at Asbury Park. The city maidens and their gallant attendants have blossomed out in blazer jackets with caps to match, which make them look like huge potato bugs. <laughs> the babies on parade at Asbury Park. The most unique parade ever known here since the time when Asbury Park was a howling wilderness and the Indians marched in single file through the woods was seen in the afternoon on the famous boardwalk of James A. Bradley, the founder of the town. It was a baby show on wheels. About 200 mothers and nurses wheeled babies in their little carriages. From the foot of Wesley Lake up to the boardwalk to the big pavilion at the foot of Fifth Avenue and back again. There were all kinds of babies. The little wagons were decorated with silk and satin flags, streamers and Japanese lanterns. Two Armenians carried a silk hammock hanging from bamboo poles on their shoulders in which were Armenian twins. Several other carriages contained twins. Only one baby cried. The rest sucked their thumbs in great contentment or cooed and smiled at the spectators and waved their rattles and other toys when the procession was applauded. Asbury Park. The opening of the Ocean Grove camp meeting this week has been the means of attracting large crowds to this town. And the good people from all parts of the country have been shocked to find that rum selling was a thriving business in this supposedly staid prohibition town. The principal offender's place of business was near the main artery of traffic between this town and the Grove, which is only separated from Asbury Park by a small lake a few hundred feet wide. As the poker players rattled the chips, they could hear the sounds from 5,000 throats singing the doxology. On Thursday night, during the heavy storm, there were hops at Ralph's Coleman House, the West End Hotel, the Oriental, Sunset Hall, the Ocean Hotel, Norwood Hall, the Colonnade, the Metropolitan Hotel, and other large houses. There were also a number of progressive whist and euchre parties. At some of the houses of the guests, at some of the houses the guests, while blindfolded, tried to pin tusks on elephants and tails on donkeys made of cloth were engaged in the festive amusement of hunting the slippery button or firing the beanbag at each other. <laughs> it's so silly. Uh, Asbury Park's big boardwalk. All sorts and conditions of men are to be seen on the boardwalk. There's the sharp, keen-looking New York businessman, the long and lank Jersey farmer, the dark-skinned sons of India, the self-possessed Chinaman, the black-haired southerner, and the man with the big hat from the wild and woolly plains of the West. The stockbrokers gather in little groups on the broad plaza and discuss the prospective rise and fall of stocks. The pretty girl, resplendent in her finest gown, walks up and down within a few feet of the surging billows and chatters away with the college youth who wears old mater's colors in his blazer jacket and cap, or else sits hand in hand with her own dear one in the pavilion, and they too, the world forgetting and by the world forgot, chew gum together in time to the beating of the waves upon the sandy beach. <laughs>